Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and this is the video for match day four for the Euros. As with the other videos for the Euros, there's no useful information in this. It's just my plans of what I'm going to do and why. But before that, let's see who's done well in the Midnight Mule Mini League. The top score for match day three was 64 points and there are two teams that got that. Anna Shuckler with Dog on Dog Fight and Goncalo, Goncalo probably with Low Costa. So look at Dog on Dog Fight first. How did they get the 64 points? Well, Ericsson Robertson got seven. Gay got eight. And then six points for Pickford and De Bruyne and Mbappe. Four points for Sabozlay, Bogmartin. I can't say his name. I've even read it lots of times. Bob Gartner. There we go. <laughs> I'm no good with these uh, players that I'm not used to. I'm not good with players I'm used to either, by the way. A Kanji four, and then Lukaku four, but that's because he was captain, you really got two. So Lukaku was actually the lowest scoring player on the pitch. And then on the bench, Castile seven, but we had Pickford for six, that was okay, and Hernandez for three. So perfectly fine. And if you look at their chip situation, they played the Limitless in three, and they played the wild card in match day two, so they have no chips left. So that means the remaining four... <laughs> Game days, match days as they're called, when it's a knockout, they need to get very lucky or else take hits with what they choose. As for Low Costa, that 64 points was managed with Captain Grimaldo with 16 points. That was very nice. Castagna, 8 points. 7 points for Ericsson. And then 6 points for Gakpo, Mbappe and Pickford. And then 4 points for Sabozlai, Rudiger. And that's it. And then on the bench, nothing. And their chip strategy. We go down here. They played the Limitless this week, but they've still got their wild card. So I would guess they're probably going to use that in the quarterfinals or semifinals, depending on results. And top of our league, with 216 points, is Mardvik with Mardvik GM. That was with Captain De Bruyne for 12. Grimaldo and Gehi got 8. Eriksen got 7 as did Castile's, and then Sabozle got four. And on the bench, nothing. And regarding their chip strategy, they had the wildcard active. They played the Limitless in game week two. So again, they're going to be hoping for some good fortune in the remaining four game weeks, or three game weeks, I guess, because the final was too late to do anything then. As for me, we need to scroll down a long way to find me. I'm all the way down here in joint 23rd. And I got 29 points. I had one player that got a return and that was Pickford with six points. So that was nice. But it's okay that I got 29 points because I had a nice time changing my captain every day and moving the subs around. So that's okay. As for my chip strategy, I've been saving my chips. But that's not really an excuse for just getting 29 points. My plan for the chip strategy was to use the limitless in game day five which is the quarterfinals and then wildcard in game day six and then hope i'm all right for the final but since then i thought it'd actually be quite nice if i could use my limitless in the semi-final and wildcard in the final but to do that i need to carry forward enough players from the last round of 16 that we're about to have into the uh, quarterfinals so what I'm about to show you is my current plan. I can't guarantee I do this, but this is my thoughts on how I'm going to have the best chance of getting into the quarterfinals without having to take hits or play a chip. Now, I do normally have my face either down here or up here somewhere, but I used up all the screen real estate, so I need to disappear for a while. Sorry about that, but I'm still here in spirit. So these are the 16 teams that are left. And what I did, I went to Bet365 and looked at the percentage chances effectively of each team qualifying because I don't care who wins all that matters is if they qualify so Spain was top with 86% England with 81% Portugal with 81% Netherlands 79% and Germany 76% so my original plan was I can just take three players from each of these that's 15 players that's my best chance of having at least 12 players go through to the next round. But the downside of this is I have no French and no Belgian players and I quite like both of those teams, but they're playing each other, you see. So if I choose players from France or Belgium, 
then it means I'm guaranteed to be losing some players. With this strategy, I may get 15 players going through. Now, if I keep going and look at the odds for the rest, next is France with 66, Austria with 66, Italy with 55, Switzerland with 45, and then Belgium 34, Turkey 34, Denmark 20, Romania 21, Slovakia and Slovenia on 19, and Georgia with 14. So my other idea, which I'm more tempted to do, I think, is still have three from England, Spain and Portugal, but then only two from Germany, two from the Netherlands, and then choose one from France and one from Belgium. And what this means is I'm guaranteed to obviously lose one of the French and Belgiums. And if as long as England, Spain and Portugal go through, then I can afford for Germany or the Netherlands to get knocked out and I will still be all right. So this is how the team lines up. I've got Musala on the 29th for Germany. He's probably going to get the old mule hat and then Mittelstadt in defence. And then the next day I have Yamal, Pedri and Carvalho for Spain and Bellingham, Gahey and Pickford for England. The following day I have Fernandes, Cancelo and Costa for Portugal and then Mbappe against De Bruyne. So at least one of those two superstars is going to be knocked out. And on the final day, I have Gakpo and Van Dijk from the Netherlands. And I can bring those in if I've got one or two players that haven't done very well. And if last week's anything to go by, I'm going to have 10 players that haven't done very well. So there's a remote chance that you noticed the background image. This is Robert Walpole, who's assumed to be Britain's first Prime Minister from about 300 years ago. He didn't have the title Prime Minister, but effectively that's what he was. He's there for like 20 years or so. It was a very different system back then. He was with the Whigs. There isn't a party called the Whigs anymore. So I, I had several ideas who to put up here in the background picture. And I thought, whatever I do, I could be offending someone. I thought, no one's really going to get offended by the Whigs, hopefully. Not unless you try to be offended by them anyway. So we have a general election next Thursday. And so I wanted to take this opportunity because I really like the general elections. I like watching all the numbers come in. I'll be staying up Thursday night all through to Friday morning watching the numbers come in. And that's because there's a really fun website I want to tell you about. So there's this website called Fancy Election. The URL is fancyelection.co.uk. I'm not affiliated with it. I get no kickbacks for mentioning it, but I thought it was a fun idea. So here's the website. You can go on it. You can read about how to use it. I've got a league I've made up. There's currently three of us in it. If you decide to make a team, please join the league. It looks like a lot of fun, even if you know nothing about politics and you know nothing about the UK, you can still put together a random team and then just see how you do. And the way you score is for each vote that your 11 candidates get, you get a point. And that's it. It's as simple as that. So you want to pick 11 candidates that you think are going to get good scores. But of course, they cost different amounts based on the overall majority they had at the last election. So hopefully that made sense and I'll try and remember to put a link below. So there we have it. General election coming up, but before that we have match day four, the last 16. And obviously I'm not going to try and sway the way you vote. You vote for whoever you want to vote. Just do your own research and have fun voting if you want to vote. If you don't want to vote, that's fine as well. If you want to spoil the ballot paper, that's fine as well. All right. Thanks for watching. Bye.